Okay, thank you. So thank you so much, Tom and Simon, for the invitation uh, and for the nice introduction. So this talk is around uh, the recently awarded, hold on, it's working here. I uh, recently awarded HR, H A H R C Project Sensing the Forest. So apart from uh, presenting a project that I am very excited about, I had acknowledged that it just started in September 2023. Uh, hence this talk, I would like to share the methodological and conceptual explorations that got me and the team uh, to this point. And also it feels appropriate, appropriate to present it now here at the CHIME network uh, to kind of uh, to a community uh, that embraces interdisciplinary and multidisciplinary uh, research methods uh, embraced in the music and HCI domains. So the outline of the talk will be starting with a contextualization of the project to then move to the importance of, of the team and, and this kind of approach of multi interdisciplinary research methods uh, to finally conclude with uh, showcasing the ongoing and future actions of the project. So in terms of contextualization, uh, I would like to start with a little story. I love hiking and that's something we usually do with my partner and Coiserola, which is the, the closest natural park to Barcelona, um, we kind of, uh, in the spring, summer of 2021, uh, we went there to find, kind of following this book that you can see on the right about fountains and itineraries that show you different fountains. Uh, so we took one of the itineraries to find these this nice uh, fountains to then discover that most of the fountains of that itinerary were kind of dried. So after 14 years of this book uh, was published, there, you know, most of the fountains were, you know, water was gone. So this was kind of a direct example of the effects of deforestation and climate change and the imposing impression that I should do something about it. And so the opportunity came with uh, this program called the Future Research Leaders Program uh, hosted here at uh, the Montfort University. And this program was led by Professor Mike uh, Bainham from the University of Leeds. And the goal of the program was to help raise what is called a strategic research competence of a selected cohort of the university to become leading researchers in the university and kind of help to do what they call blue sky thinking or uh, try to imagine uh, yeah, uh, new ideas uh, beyond your comfort zone. And so my goal with this program was to explore how music and audio technology can contribute to solve the important challenge of the climate change crisis and in particular deforestation. Uh, and yeah, we had a little bit of budget so we could travel and visit and meet uh, 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 new partners, potential new partners. And so kind of the vision of, of the project was uh, kind of connected to this story of the dry up mount, uh, fountains uh, and this idea of uh, kind of trying to understand or communicate better with the trees or the forest. So on the left you can see a photo when I was living in Sheffield from my daily walks uh, in Norfolk, Norfolk Park and this idea of yeah seeing the trees trying to kind of understanding or thinking about what other ways uh, we can communicate and kind of transferring what we've been doing like in physical computing trying to understand the real world sensing and actuating but then you know what if instead of a human-centric perspective we apply kind of a more uh, kind of nature-centric perspective uh, so that could be yeah uh, an explanation of kind of the the vision of of the project um, but then also there is this idea of this notion of intervention or artistic intervention to this uh, natural ecosystem. Um, and so very much influenced with kind of the sound art kind of a discipline, if you like, or area. Um, here you can see on the left, like this book on sound art together with the exhibition that was curated by Peter Weibel at ZKM. And this notion about sound as a medium to emphasize the auditory experience, uh, but also from sound, you can kind of uh, raise uh, political questions, 
uh, related also to the critical kind of examination of sound and listening. So thinking about like intervention, um, there are also other examples. This, uh, for instance, is not necessarily related to kind of the auditory experience, but still is the notion of an artistic intervention uh, in the nature and with some positive effect. Uh, so you can see here, um, well, what is called the uh, Institute Terra, which was founded by Sebastião Salgao, who is a famous photographer, and his wife Lelia Juanic Salgado. And so the idea with this project was, and still is, um, working with the rainforest in Brazil, one, one um, area, and from uh, a region that was totally uh, this, uh, without trees and it had like serious deforestation problems, after reforesting, uh, kind of planting trees and, and, and doing some interventions, after 12 years, you can see already uh, kind of an improvement. Uh, positive improvement, which also has impacted on kind of the, the new plants or, or, or um, animals that were before disappear and then came back. Uh, so that's another example of a positive intervention. Um, a third one that I would like to highlight, uh, this comes from Cesar Manrique, uh, who is an artist, was an artist um, working uh, with different in artistic interventions in Lanzarote, which is an island uh, in the Canary Islands. Um, and so the interventions uh, aim to kind of convert a volcanic island of only rocks and stones to a sustainable touristic island. And so here you can see a photo of Jameos del Agua, which um, are a series of lava caves located in the northern side of the, of the island and how this very, like, this human intervention has embraced, in a way, what, you know, the, the nature, but has converted the space into an art, cultural, and touristic center. So the main motto, this uh, very much inspired by Cesar Manrique, but also the, you know, uh, previous works, and, uh, but, but especially for our project, is this notion of nature and artistic creation in harmony. Um, which kind of uh, brings us to the next section. So, um, yeah, all these artworks and artistic interventions help, have helped us in terms of the team um, kind of to reflect or think about what makes sense to the project in terms of techno-artistic interventions. Um, that can raise awareness among the community, and that includes forest visitors, artists, scientists, and the general public about this connection between forests and, and climate change. Um, and so the idea then is kind of to explore this artistic intervention, and there are actually two that I'll present later, uh, following kind of this uh, motto and approach. So a common aspect of, of the project is, are these three keywords that you see here, Internet of Things, Acoustic Ecology, and Creative AI, which I will kind of, uh, yeah, um, present throughout the, the actions that I'll talk a little bit later. But basically the notion here is to explore from a very DIY um, approach, and that's because we want also to create technologies and export technologies that can be used by by any by everybody, uh, but also this notion of can we can we explore the mo monitoring of forests and trees, uh, so using Internet of Things and also uh, through the acoustic ecology kind of um, uh, approach, so promoting the listening. Uh, can we do that, but also can we apply creative AI to identify certain patterns and kind of um, uh, predict, if you like, or, or see, you know, a behavior at the longer kind of term than daily monitoring. But these are kind of three key words that, that are present in the project. And just, you know, to, to share with you the, the key research question, um, so basically, uh, we are interested in how can we use the artistic and community science research methods to help inform and educate people about climate change, but also we are in particular interested about what can we learn from using artistic and community science research methods employing 
Internet of Things, acoustic ecology, and creative AI in relation to monitoring the forest behavior and raising awareness about climate change. So, uh, it was clear that the starting point for the project was uh, uh, the need for exploring interdisciplinary and multidisciplinary uh, research methods and, and so that the team should be a combination, if you like, or of artists, scientists, and exploring those different research methods and trying to find perhaps new ways um, of, of exploring uh, these monitoring um, activities. And so, again, the democratization of these tools was also a key element, which um, uh, you will see when, when describing the actions. So I would like to introduce you the team and the way they work, each of us, we work differently, but I think this is important then so that uh, the way we are now exploring these interdisciplinary, multidisciplinary approaches, you know, might make more, more sense. So you can see here, uh, Dr. Matthew Wilkinson, who is a senior climate scientist working at, uh, at the Alice Hall Forest and for forest research. And so Matt, Matthew, or Matt, um, as we name him, uh, is basically concerned about improving our understanding of the forest carbon and greenhouse gas balances. So he's very much interested in developing new techniques and sensors for forest monitoring and also trace gas flux measurements. Then in the photo here, you see uh, a big, like a uh, very long tower that Matt is controlling or they are using for kind of uh, gathering data and monitoring. Um, and so they use this photo, this type of photo is what is called uh, hemispherical photo. And they, they use those photos to monitor changes in what they call the forest phenology. Forest phenology in the sense they look into like the seasonal changes and, and they observe these photos for kind of to identify those patterns. Um, then we also work with uh, George, Dr. George Chenakis, who is also a senior climate scientist working at the Northern Station of Forest Research. And so George is um, interested in the drought effect of trees both on the ecosystem and also the individual tree scale. So uh, he works very much with what you see here, tree talkers that are kind of uh, connected to the tree and they also might uh, can be interconnected among them. Uh, things or uh, data or kind of uh, the aspects that George is looking through these devices uh, include, for example, the water transport inside the, the trees, uh, the soil temperature, but also the, the diameter growth, air temperature and humidity, um, and so on. There's also Dr. Peter Bachelor, who is a senior lecturer in music technology and innovation at the Montfort University, the same university where I'm at. And Peter is working on uh, kind of artistic installations, very much looking into multi-channel installation, and so this is a series, you can see one example of a series of work that Pete is developing uh, using like this um, uh, structure. Uh, this is a collaboration with, with visual artist Ian Bilson. And so this kind of spherical structure is kind of providing, is, um, contains 40 loudspeakers. So you can sit inside and kind of enjoy uh, a multi-channel experience sitting uh, in this very nice kind of dome. Uh, but also this this version, which is uh, called Willow, uh, is kind of designed for outdoors. So then there is this kind of uh, combination between the multi-channel experience from the installation, but also the outer sound. So there is kind of these uh, two dual spaces. Also, uh, there is uh, Dr. Luigi Marino, who joined us in October, so very, very recent recently and Luigi Marino uh, his expertise is on relational music uh, his, in, his research is interested in human agency and machine agency and is inspired by network music actor network theory uh, relational aesthetics uh, and this is an image uh, from his thesis 
which is called Revisiting a Relational Approach to Electronic Music. And so he's bringing this expertise on network music, but also the role of the different actors within uh, this network. Then we are also uh, working with uh, Forestry England. And you can see here Hazel Stone, who is the national curator of contemporary art in Forestry England. So basically, Hazel uh, looks uh, like kind of curates uh, different inter artistic interventions across the different forests. Uh, but then we will also collaborate with Nick Wardlow or are collaborating with Nick Wardlow, who is a recreation manager of the Forestry England, and then the site managers of Alice Hall, Daniel Grimsey and Max Gravestock. Uh, we are also collaborating in the project with Dr. Krishna Majunata, who is a senior lecturer in micro and nano electronics at the Montfort, and Ashok Karavadra, who is a senior technician at the Montfort University and uh, this area or like both will or are helping with all the DIY, especially for one of the, the two interventions that I will tell in a minute. So they are helping um, and assessing from their perspectives uh, on this DIY building. And then it's there's me as well, who is bringing expertise on practice based research and human computer interaction. So building, but also assessing the kind of uh, these artistic interventions. So bringing HCI methodologies for that. And last but not least, we have uh, uh, the advisory board consisting of Professor Mark Plumbly from University of Surrey, Luis Ferrot of Clemens from Forestry England, and Professor Lilandi from the Montfort University. So, this is the team, which is probably you agree with me that it's quite interdisciplinary and multidisciplinary. And so the idea here, we hope, um, is that there will be also some cross-pollination among the different research methods from science, the arts, HCI. And so this image here comes from a publication and research with it, uh, led by G Kerry Jewitt, uh, Sarah Price and myself. And we were exploring in the context of social science uh, research and artistic research, whether and how any research methodological uh, cross-pollination can happen. And so on the left, you can see a little bit like different ways that this uh, can take place, like expanding a research method or resituating a research method transferring it or generating a new research method. So we really hope, and we are already proposing some, some adapted research methods from science to the arts, and we hope this can happen the other way around. So from the artistic research methods, we can also inform scientific research methods. So that's kind of the, the intention there. And now I'll move to the third part, which is the actions of the project present and future. <laughs> um, so the project has three core goals, if you like, and one, uh, one main goal is uh, kind of to establish and create public conversations and debate. And so this is will be and is done through the website that we released in, in September, and you can have a look. So the website is and the blog also are very important are very important just to keep updated about what is going on, but also yeah to share our progress. Um, but also we are trying within this same goal about establishing these conversations. We started a seminar series. We had the first seminar series last week with a semiconductor and Peter Sinclair, and then we have two more: one next week by Saloni Shah and John Spale, and on the fifteenth of November another and the last seminar series by Liz O'Brien and Alice Eldridge. And so you're, we will uh, share the recordings and you are, but still you're very welcome to attend uh, and, and join the conversation live. And what we expect from this seminar series is to connect with scholars uh, that are relevant to the project, but also build connect with the community. And then another goal is kind of, we have two project interventions, one 
goal is this that you see here, the first forest intervention that will happen and here artistic audio ecology intervention concerning forest and climate data. Um, so basically the intervention here will be uh, a one-year intervention uh, with a sound installation uh, solar powered audio stream box um, and so we will have this installation uh, kind of led by Pete Bachelor, and then we'll have a sound uh, kind of solar power audio stream box that will be streaming the sound produced, uh, but also we will be streaming the raw soundscape uh, of, of the forest. And we will be streaming this data, but also recording this data for, you know, throughout the year to later kind of uh, explore these this potential patterns uh, through creative uh, AI. Um, there is a, also the, um, kind of an exhibition, like it will be very uh, ephemeral exhibition, uh, but keep an eye because, yeah, that will be also exploring ways of artistically intervening in the forest, but in a kind of with the help and a kind of assistance from uh, Forestry England. So we, we kind of uh, try to not um, be harmful with the forest. But yeah, this is uh, first intervention. And you can have a closer look here about how the system looks like for the audio streamer, stream, streamer that is led by uh, Luigi. Um, but the intention here, sorry, I'm skipping, is to create like this autonom autonomous monitoring unit that is kind of audio recording and audio streaming at the same time. And we have a little uh, proof of concept so Luigi is working uh, with the image you can see here from Bristol. He's streaming, and just let's let's uh, listen to it. Just and maybe I can keep talking while this is playing. Perhaps if that's is that annoying or yeah. Okay. I don't see all that. So yeah, we are in the process of now building this first audio streamer unit or and as a work in pro pro progress, the intention here will be that it's sustainable and yes, uh, self-powered and so on. But that's, you know, uh, initial, initial uh, explorations. Then in terms of the one year uh, multi-channel installation led by Pete, you can see here initial ideas as well. Uh, the notion here is to create a canopy of speakers above the forest floor. Um, and yeah, still unclear whether it's going to be or uh, of speakers or between uh, less trees. But yeah, the kind of idea is how to bring multi channel experiences in the forest. Uh, in a kind of natural way and, you know, uh, not non-harmful way. Second prototype, which is going to happen um, in a year time, we will start, but I, you know, it's, uh, it's good to start discussing it already. So this is uh, very much looking into how George is working and trying to kind of explore this notion of the tree talkers, but make them DIY and explore ways of sonifying um, kind of the, the data coming from, from the trees and when analyzing the trees. So live data, but exploring that from an artistic perspective. So with sonification and visualizations. And the idea here will be also to distribute across the country a few units and then do some kind of, uh, if you like, um, a case study or, yeah, just uh, studying it for three months or so and kind of gathering a little bit how the development is going and that will inform iteratively on the production of the prototypes. Just concern of time. So yeah, he, this image which I took this morning I found perfect to kind of define the here in Leicester. Uh, the idea of the community is very important. So sharing the process, uh, we are using already open source uh, technology. So the idea is also to share that, uh, our kind of findings with the community. But this project is very important 
the community and doing in community and sharing. So that's kind of the, the point I would like to make as, as part of the project. And it's great this having the opportunity to present it here as a way to also yeah, present it and encourage um, the people. So in summary, uh, we discuss the meaning of artistic intervention when working with nature and discuss the potential of combining and reimagining research methods when working in inter and multidisciplinary teams. And finally, uh, yeah, I will showcase the present and future actions of, of the project. So yeah, I hope this uh, gave you an idea of uh, the intentions and where we are at at the moment. And yeah, looking forward to know what you think and any ideas or you know comments or suggestions are very welcome. Thank you very much. Great. Thanks very much, Anna. Anna There's a uh, virtual applause going on. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so we have uh, five minutes um, for kind of direct questions about that. Um, if anyone wants to, to kind of uh, either put your hand up to, to kind of speak out loud or um, feel free to post in the chat if you prefer. It's always hard to tell the difference between clapping emojis and hands up. I was going to ask a quick one um, just to see whether is this something that it's, it's, it's quite interesting being at the start of a project and hearing a talk at this stage. Mm -hmm. Might there be ways for those here to get involved in any way at a later point? Like, would you have calls for using the data, for example, or, or sonification projects or anything like that as part of this? Yeah, thank you for the question. So, yes, there are different ways. So we will announce very soon there will be a, what we call a summer school. This is targeted to, to students, uh, master students or PhD students, but there will be the opportunity for 10 students, uh, early career researchers, if you like, to develop an inst uh, kind of a, an ephemeral installation. So there will be like three months kind of, of preparation, uh, but then with guidance from the team members, and then we will have this exhibition in May. So this will start around January, February next year, and, and there will be the opportunity to, sh to showcase the work. Uh, the other ways of getting involved, uh, there will be, well, of course, you know, you can follow the, the developments, uh, but there will be uh, an open, like this exhibition, there will be an opening, so people are welcome as attendees to join as well. And the data, as you, as you say, we will share the data, so anyone can use it, of course. Uh, a data set of audio recordings we are following so instead of recording the entire live stream we will follow uh, much uh, phenology kind of approach so we will be recording shorter audio audio extracts if you like or audio recordings and this will be publicly available so anyone can use for analysis or performance or and Finally, if you want to participate in the, you know, to explore these three talkers, we will also launch an open call if you want to be a participant. Yeah. Great. Yeah, that's that's all good to know. I can. I, I'm currently showing master student sonification this ah. week, so I can ah, nice. have that in the back of my mind to some extent. Yeah. Um, and they they should be hopefully tooled up and ready to apply for something like that in January. Um, nice. Yeah. So I'll send it. Yeah. Push it that way. Um, any other questions? Well, we've still got a few minutes before we move on to Chris. Uh, yeah, Jimena. Hi, uh, thank you, Anna. Uh, hello. Uh, hello. Hey, Anna, how are you? <laughs> yeah, good, good. <laughs> thank you. Um, yes, I was wondering about the listening perspectives um, uh, with the graphic that you were showing, um, like the speakers uh, intervening in the forest, and mm -hmm. then we are listening to the forest. So I was wondering about in the forest, um, who who are the listeners? I mean, as are, are the trees the listeners themselves? So let's say, <laughs> or 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 there are groups that are going to listen. So I just would love to know what what is that in the forest. That's a very yeah interesting and yeah important question. So I guess 
that's what why it is kind of you know like with the multi-channel installation considering how to locate the different speakers or maybe the trees can also listen so that would be more like this forest centric approach uh, the human centric approach so we hope that there are different ways to kind of enjoy the listening experience uh, one is just walking by as a you know uh, a kind of a a lover of hiking you can just go there and explore it like presentially but we also would like to uh, bring that experience online so there will be also this option with intervention human intervention and without human intervention hope for the minimum we also hope to bring that experience online so we we are exploring uh different ways of of communicating or yeah not intervening but kind of transferring what's going on but yeah that's a key question yeah thanks um there's possibly time for one more quick question in the chat i'll, I'll just read it out so everyone can hear it um so it's from blight max maxen uh del Seta. um hi anna thank you so much for the talk i was wondering about the sonification as well actually i was curious to know if you already have ideas of the kind of practice you are looking for or perhaps the kind of sonic spaces you want to explore well, we've discussed, thanks for the question, Blaise. We, we've discussed this, well, first of all, uh, George Georgios Shinakis, who's not familiar with the uh, f a composer, but you know, George Georgios has sonification uh, examples already, sound sonifications from, from the data he's collecting. Uh, but we discuss, I mean, uh, we discuss about exploring parametric uh, sonification, but then Luigi, who is now on board, uh, he has also like a, a very kind of a political perspective as well of, about how to sonify, which is, yeah. So I think we need to give it a careful thought. So we have some ideas about this parametric sonification, but it will be really a kind of a team discussion because there are different approaches there. Um, but yeah, I hope uh, this is helpful, but just to say we will explore different ways as well. So sonification, visualization, and, 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 and not a single solution in a way, so different, different approaches, but within the scope of the, of the project. I hope this answer your question. Thank you. Great. Um, so we, we'll have time after Chris's talk for wider discussion, and we can come back to anything anyone wants to ask about that. But I'm going to pass over to Simon Holland now and just thank Anna again for that talk. Um, so thanks very much. Thank you very much.